My name is Evelyn He. I'm the founder of No Black Tides. I was born in Miri, Sarawak. When I was seven years old, then my parents sent us for music lessons, piano lessons with my two other sisters. But of course, before that, you know, my parents, especially my dad, would always play records in the house. So we always grew up with music in the house. I think the music came very naturally. Uh, I remember the first few piano lessons. It was not difficult. And then, of course, the piano arrived at home. And for some years, you know, the first thing when I wake up, I go naturally to the piano. And when I finished my Form 5, it was natural. There was, it was always in my mind that I would eventually go and study music full time. And with the blessing of both my parents, I was able to send out audition tapes to the United States. But the process was difficult because, you know, it was a very naive dream to want to be a, a concert pianist because then I found out that, you know, in order to have a serious career in music, you have to start training from very young, very rigorously. So having said that, my first arrival in, in America, I first went to the St. Louis Conservatory of Music. I would be up very early in the morning. I make sure I'd be the first one in the conservatory practicing first before the others arrive because you hear the footsteps outside the practice room and everybody is so competitive. Everybody's like listening to, ooh, what's he practicing? What's she, what, what is she playing, you know? I was there for three and a half years, almost four years. And at the time I was offered to go to Cincinnati or to Chicago to continue my master's. Um, so I decided to go to Chicago because they offered me full scholarship and also a stipend. I was accompanying a lot for different instrumentalists. You know, there was a Korean violist that I played with. There was also a French uh, flutist that I played with. So after we graduated, we decided that we we're gonna go on a tour in France. We played in various places, um, in Angers, then we went to the Sudwest. So those were carefree days, yeah. So naturally after France, I had to come back to Malaysia, yeah. So I was back in Sarawak. Then, you know, I had a music school, I was teaching and performing. And then after two years, I was getting restless. So I decided to try and go back to school in America. So I went to New York City, I went back to Chicago, I did a few auditions, wanting to go back to school, but now thinking about it, fortunately, at the time was unfortunately, I, could, I did not win any audition. Then I decided to come to Kuala Lumpur. Hi, hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Evelyn. Hello, great to meet you. Great, is everybody here? How are you? Okay, how are you doing? I'm good. good I'm good. It was at that time that I started to get to know um, singers, instrumentalists in the city. And we used to have Sunday afternoon concerts in friends' house. And from there really came to me the idea of recreating the Salon Soirees of the Romantic period where classical music was really performed not necessarily in the, in the big concert hall, but in the cafes or in people's homes, in their living rooms. And friends brought me to this street, Jala Musui, in January of 98. And I walked into number 27 Jala Musui. It was called Brej. It was a beautiful wooden box. And they were selling wines and cigars. It was a, a quiet, discreet, intimate wine bar. The minute I walked in, I knew it would be the perfect spot for an informal classical evening. For us, it was fun. For us, we were like kids um, doing something that we love to do. 
uh, in the place that we feel that we're not in Kuala Lumpur, that has a, a bit of Europe in it. It was all wooden and we were just having fun. And the audience just loved that. And so they were also having fun with us. At the same time also, I was going out to see what, where the other musicians played. So I was brought to bars where there's live music, where the jazz musicians are playing, and where the blues musicians are playing. And I was just very surprised that these are very good musicians playing, but everybody's talking. Nobody's listening to them. I mean, and I'm talking about great guys playing, people like Louis Pragasam, Josie Thomas, you know, Michael Virapan, you know. So then I was thinking perhaps we should invite these musicians to come and perform on our stage. And so everybody came and performed and those days we had the best jazz artists in the country come and perform. And so it became natural for, for me then to think about, hey, why don't we take over the business? I actually froze. I was like, what's gonna happen? And then I said to myself, don't be scared. <laughs> just, just have to stay calm, think about the music, and that's what I did. And then we were, from 27, we moved to 17. We were able to move five doors away, and it's still happening. And here we are. <laughs> it's a crazy story.